situated in a in an ongoing debate about in the sort of internal uh, coalition of the center right in this country, and, and this to me in the last 24 hours marks something fairly remarkable. The president ran on his opposition to the Iraq War, which was never actually extant, or it came too late. In 2013, we have the tweets from him saying it's ridiculous to go to war in Syria. The U.S. gets nothing. Do not get dragged into this. Um, his support within the party comes from a sort of part of the center right that is incredibly opposed to Syrian intervention generally. In some cases, as you move out towards the margins, just str straight up pro-Assad. Here he is now taking the Jennifer Rubin, John McCain, Lindsey Graham sort of line on things. It's a pretty stunning 180. Well, we'll see what he actually does. Um, Donald Trump obviously has a record of saying one thing and doing the other or doing nothing. Um, listen, reality does catch up with people, um, and that's the problem with um, running with very little information, very little uh, senior advice, very little expertise, and then having to govern. Those are two different things. Um, and right now, he is getting probably his first information that, oh, by the way, the Russians are with Assad. Um, that level of basic information may have escaped the President of the United States. I'm not making this up. I'm not kidding. So I think he's getting a crash course in international diplomacy. I agree with uh, Evelyn, your previous guest, that, listen, um, there is always an argument that we should have done something before, therefore we can't do anything now. We should have done something in 2009 when it first started, therefore we couldn't do anything in 2012. Then we couldn't do anything in 2013. At some point, we do have to do something, and um, I think there are a range of options here. Um, whether the president decides that he's going to go full bore um, on the most extreme options or whether he's going to seek a middle ground has yet to be determined. Um, I think there is a problem, however, and that is he has to decide what he wants to do. He has to well, decide. Right. Does, is his goal now to get rid of Assad? A few days ago, we were hearing from Mr. Tillerson and also from our UN ambassador that the Syrian people were going to decide as if they can decide anything as they're being barrel bombed and chemical uh, and gassed by chemical weapons. So, what does he want? Does he want? Assad out? Does he want to change the battlefield enough that diplomatic measures can then try to move Saddam, uh, to move, uh, Freudian slip there, can move Assad out? Um, I don't know what he wants, and he probably doesn't know what he wants. You can't just order up whatever from the Pentagon. They're right. going to ask, what do you want to do? And I don't think we have a good answer to that right now. All right. Uh, Shadi, you, you have been really outspoken in your critiques of American policy in Syria, uh, which, which I think you view as a sort of both moral and strategic failure uh, thus far. Um, how do you understand what appears to be on the table tonight? So I support strikes, but I don't think that we should do something just for the sake of doing something. And I think the problem is this very narrow focus on chemical weapons. To me, this isn't about chemical weapons. It's about the Assad regime's brutality. And I think that there has to be a broader strategic vision. So I'm someone who's been outspoken in favor of targeting the Assad regime for quite some time now. But I worry that Trump wants to just go in, do some punitive strikes, leave it at that, we forget about Syria, and that we're not, then we're not actually addressing the root causes of the broader conflict. So what I would like to see is a focus on using military force to push Assad to negotiate in good faith, to force him to compromise, and to strengthen the mainstream rebels and to actually try to shift the battlefield balance. That has to be the bigger conversation here because chemical weapons, um, you can, as, as you and others have said, you can kill a lot of people without chemical weapons. And we also should be thinking about military force in the sense that we want to make it harder for Assad to kill people. I mean, let's not forget about the humanitarian calculus here. And I worry that we're sort of, we're sort of getting very focused on the narrow aspects of chemical weapons. Yeah, let, so here's, here, I, I want to detach two things in this conversation. As we're looking at a map there, and we're, we're at this hour of the presence of Mar-a-Lago. There are reports that he's been briefed uh, from the Pentagon on possible uh, strikes against Syria. Uh, this six years into uh, uh, the war in Syria, which began as a, a revolution, which was violently suppressed, has since become a civil war, uh, has seen the entrance of Iran and then Russia in a big way, which have altered the sort of balance of gravity of the battlefield back towards an Assad regime that was really Feeling at one point uh, of fracturing of many different rebel groups. All of this is the context, Shadi, that, that, that I think it's important to talk about what the Democratic 
process here is, and, and I've, I've read your critiques of the president, it was, of course, Congress that declined to authorize that strike. Um, here's Senator Mike Lee tonight saying if the United States is to increase our use of military force in Syria, we should follow the Constitution, seek the proper authorization from Congress. Uh, President Trump should make his case in front of the American people, allow their elected representatives to debate the benefits and risks of further Middle Eastern intervention to our national security interests. Do you agree? N uh, no, I mean, so I... Obama was very close to striking Assad in August 2013, and we were at the 11th hour. French jets were readied um, in terms of targets. So it wasn't as if Obama was waiting for Congress. It's only when he apparently had second thoughts at the very last moment that he said, OK, let's table this and have a conversation about it. But I think that for Obama, it was about skirting responsibility. And he, he already had made his decision, and he knew the votes weren't there in Congress. Right, but the, the votes not yeah. being there, and, and, and Jennifer, I'd like you to t talk about this as well. I mean, to me, the votes not being there, right, are, are, it's not just the votes not being there. It's that, as a sort of democratic matter, does America want to go to war in Syria? Now, we should also say we've been bombing in Syria. We've been bombing ISIS, and there are many people in the revolution in Syria who say that we've essentially been helping Assad in that respect, so I should be clear about that. But, but the votes not being there is representative of something broader, Jennifer, which is that the American people don't seem to have much appetite for another m military intervention in the Middle East. Well, we're in Syria right now. We not only have been bombing, but we have people on the ground. The exact number is yeah. up for debate. So it's not like um, we're not at war yet. The question is, um, do we want to increase that? Um, listen. Um, well, also, do we want to do we want to go to war against another new? I mean, the, the the point here should be clear, right? That we have not been striking Assad, uh, as, as Shadi has said. We have been going after ISIS, which, Correct. in a perverse way, many people argue, has been aiding Assad. In fact, many people think that the American uh, uh, policy thus far has been essentially to keep maintain the status quo. Well, um, the original idea was that so long as there was a non-jihadi rebel force, um, that we could support those people and then push towards a negotiated settlement. Unfortunately, because of inaction of the Obama administration, that force, that middle ground force, has really been very much decimated. Um, but to the point, I do think that. Um, if we're going to make a military action, if we're going to do something more than what Obama was accused of doing back in 2013, pinpricks, um, that we should come up with a coherent strategy to right. wrap around that. Um, President Obama did lose his nerve. What he, what triggered him to lose his nerve was that the British Parliament, right. if you remember, um, voted down the use of force. And suddenly he said, oh my gosh, uh, I might be out here alone. So um, he did go to Congress. I do find it interesting that many people now who are insisting on action, including people like Marco Rubio, by the way, were against use of force. And by the way, this was not a partisan thing. No, we had there was no one wanted to vote for this thing in Congress. That's I just want to be true. clear. We had, so we had Republicans Republican leaders and we had Democratic leaders, to be very fair, who were in a bipartisan way willing at the upper right. levels. Um, whether there were the numbers down below is another matter. Um, but um, the president believed at that right. time, um, other presidents believed that they have the authority um, to um, escalate and to at well. least consult, but then go forward. Um, the question is, um, is it in our interest to get Congress involved? And I actually think now he could get the vote and it would be helpful to go to Congress at this point. believe that they have the authority um, to um, escalate and to at well. least consult, but then go forward. Um, the question is, um, is it in our interest to get Congress involved? And I actually think now he could get the vote, and it would be helpful to go to Congress at this point. Well, that's interesting. Jennifer uh, and Shadi, I, I want you to